I want to address the question of enshrining victims' rights in law, and I want to discuss a particular group of victims, bereaved families and survivors of public disasters. Madam Deputy Speaker, I've been raising matters and speaking on behalf of the Hillsborough families, some of whom are my constituents, since I was elected in 1997. On the 26th of May, the final criminal trials arising out of the unlawful killing of 96 children, women and men collapsed. There's now no prospect of anyone responsible for the gross negligence of South Yorkshire Police on that day being held to account by our criminal justice system, and nor will anyone be held to account for the subsequent police cover-up in which police sought to deflect blame onto the victims and survivors of the disaster and away from themselves. This has led to so much anguish and pain for the families and survivors over the last 32 years, as they've repeatedly had to defend the reputations of their wholly innocent lost loved ones and fellow fans. Despite David Cameron having apologised to the families and survivors from the dispatch box when he was Prime Minister in 2012 for the police cover-up, last week a defence barrister involved in the collapse trials repeated the slurs about Liverpool fans on the BBC, and another denied there'd been a cover-up in an article in The Spectator. Yet the very next day, an agreement by South Yorkshire Police and West Midlands Police to make payments in civil damages to 601 family members and survivors for the further psychological distress caused by that very cover-up was made public. It cannot be right that these untrue claims are still made with impunity. Families should not have to spend 32 years defending the reputations of their lost loved ones. Whilst it's an extreme case, there have been other disasters where the victims have been blamed or where families have been unable to find out the truth of what happened and have been marginalised, ignored, not seen as central to legal and administrative proceedings. It seems likely that there will be more such instances in future if nothing changes. It took the Hillsborough families 23 years of non-stop battling to have the truth of what happened to their loved ones acknowledged officially. 28 years to get correct inquest verdicts, and 32 years in total until all the criminal prosecutions arising out of the disaster came to an end. It is far, far too long. The law needs to be changed to make provision for proper, bespoke support at an early stage for those bereaved in public disasters. I don't just mean legal advice. Once things go wrong, it's almost impossible to put them right. Things have to be done properly from the start. There are a number of proposals that would make a difference, and I urge the government and the right honourable gentleman to adopt them. The establishment of an independent public advocate, and I can tell him, I think he knows I have a ready-made bill to do it, is key to stopping things going wrong in the first place. It uses freedom of information and transparency, the principles underlying the operation of the Hillsborough Independent Panel to prevent cover-ups from happening, and to make sure that bereaved families are at the very heart of proceedings. Measures in the Public Authorities Accountability Bill around a duty of candour and equality of arms at inquests would all help. I hope the Lord Chancellor will now agree that the law really must be changed to stop bereaved families in public disasters from being treated like the Hillsborough families have been treated ever again. I hope he'll agree it will be a fitting tribute to their 32 year campaign for truth and justice. And as my constituents bereaved or affected by Hillsborough said to me when I met them after I was elected 24 years ago, we don't want this to happen to anyone else. It's incumbent on all of us in this place to make sure that it cannot ever happen again.